Hi there, this is Tom Ingram, and in today's video, we're going to show you how we create and manage vector databases for our AI applications. Now, if you've been using Flowwise for a while, you know there are tons of vector databases that you can use. And so in today's video, we're going to show you three vector databases that you can use in your applications, as well as a way to actually manage and troubleshoot your databases when something goes wrong. Because until now, if you've been using a, a database like Chroma, you know that it generally works. You know, if as long as Chroma is running or what or Pinecone, if you're using Pinecone, as long as the surface is running, it generally works. But sometimes when it doesn't work, you need to be able to figure out exactly what's going wrong. Uh, and so we're going to show you a few uh, tools that you can use just to get more visibility into your databases, because that's going to be very important, especially as you begin to move from um, development to actually production. You know, being able to actually um, manage your database, being able to make changes if you need to, um, and just in general, being able to handle it uh, in a better way. So today we're going to be creating an application that allows us to chat with a, um, a manual for N8N. Uh, as you know, N8N is a, a fantastic automation platform that allows you to create different workflows uh, for your websites, for your applications. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working with one of the official um, product guides, one of the official manuals for N8N uh, that also allows you to, uh, or at least shows you how to connect with uh, platforms like Bubble. So Bubble is a front-end app development uh, platform. It's a great way to connect and use Bubble with NAN for your product development. So we're going to be taking this guide and we're going to be creating uh, a chatbot with it. Um, and in the process, we're going to show you how we uh, manage and use some of our vector databases. So we're going to go to the first one. And like I said, uh, one of the most popular vector databases is Chroma. And Chroma is great because it's simple. Uh, it works extremely well. Uh, it's very fast. And, um, and it is supported by Flowwise. And so this is our basic uh, chat flow. All right, we have our conversational retrieval chain. We have uh, Mistral. We're going to be using Mistral for our LLM. And we're going to be using Chroma, of course. Uh, now, usually if you have, uh, because Chroma is not is currently self-hosted, so in order to have Chroma, you will have to uh, install it on your hosting provider, uh, on your VPS server, uh, to order, in order to get it to work. Uh, and then we're also using our Hugging Face Embeddings instead of OpenAI. Uh, and of course, this is the PDF file. Now, uh, you may be wondering why there's no text splitter, and that's because this is actually already uh, uploaded to uh, the Chroma database. So we don't actually need to upload it again. Uh, so that's why that works. And so um, when it comes to using Chroma, it's great that Chroma works, but usually you don't have any visibility into uh, your Chroma database. Um, you can always query it, I'm sure, but that takes extra work. So what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be using another tool um, called Vector Admin. And Vector Admin is a cloud-hosted uh, tool, a cloud-based tool, and it's also a self-hosted tool that you can install on your server. And what Vector Admin does is it basically syncs with your uh, database. So right now, let's see here, I believe it supports... It supports Chrome, it supports Chroma, it supports um, Qdrent, it supports Weavia, and also supports Pinecone. So you can actually connect to your um, to any one of these databases, and you can manage the database from within your vector admin uh, console. And so, in this case, we have already um, imported or embedded our our PDF that we'll be using. And so that PDF is actually here. And as you can see, we have some of our documents that we're using for the database. And what Vector Admin allows you to do is you can go to any of these uh, imported documents and you can actually see um, the text. You can actually see the text that's a part of that we imported from the PDF. And so uh, Vector Admin is really a great, uh, it's a great tool. Uh, just for getting more visibility into your uh, into your databases, uh, but also being able to actually even edit, uh, you can actually edit your um, your entries here, and of course 
I think with these editing, you know, you always kind of want to make sure that it's fairly close to the original so that you don't skew the embedding. Um, but, um, but yeah, vector admin is a great way to actually, um, to actually manage your database. And if you don't want to actually install vector admin on your system, uh, like I said, they actually have a, uh, a cloud version that also offers um, uh, storage. So you don't just get a management uh, software, you actually get like a database as well. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I like vector admin. But um, if we go back to our, um, our chat bot, you can see that one of the questions we asked it was how can I connect my innate workflows uh, to bubble? And then, you know, it gives us an answer. And so with each of these vector databases, you know, I would actually suggest testing a few. Uh, I know Chroma works really well, but, you know, if you test out a few, you can actually see sort of some of the differences and how they work. And you can begin to understand um, exactly how to, you know, optimize your chatbot uh, for the best results. Generally speaking, they should work the same, uh, especially if you're using the same LLM. But sometimes, depending on the way that you actually create the database and, and how it's set up, sometimes that can affect the um, the outputs, the responses. So you just want to keep that in mind. Okay, so now that we've covered uh, Chroma, the next uh, vector store that you can use is called Zep. And so Zep is, a, is also supported by Flowwise. And so um, what I like about Zep is that it actually has a UI that comes with uh, the database, right? And so you can actually manage your uh, collections. Um, you can also manage some of your sessions because Zep has memory, also, also has long-term memory. And so uh, with Zep, it's pretty much the same. Um, you do have to install it on your server. Uh, it has a connect credential, has a JWT token that you have to use. It's very, very important. Um, but yeah, Zep works pretty much the same as Chroma. Um, once you have uh, uploaded your uh, your document within Chroma, of course, you can just go and you know upsert the uh, vector store. Um, one thing with Chroma, though, I'm sorry. One thing with Zep is that you have to be very very aware of your chunk size. Uh, with Chroma, I haven't really had any issues with it. Uh, I just use the default. I believe that the default is like a thousand. Uh, it's not here, but the default is a thousand. Um, but here, I actually found that uh, depending on the size of my document, I had to experiment with the chunk size. Um, otherwise, it wouldn't work. <laughs> otherwise, it wouldn't actually uh, insert anything. So I'll show you exactly what I mean. Um, this is an example here. So this is basically all of my collections in my Zep vector store. And you can see how um, there are out of the four, there are three where you can see documents that have been embedded. But this one, Practical Guide 1213, there are zero documents after several attempts. <laughs> and so um, with Zep, you do have to keep in mind the chunk size. And um, if it's not working, you do need to, uh, you may need to lower the chunk size until it actually successfully embeds the documents. Zep is capable of embedding, I think, something up to 10 million documents. So it's, it's, it's capable. It can do just about anything you need it to do. But uh, you do need to be aware of that. And that's where the UI comes in. I think that's where it's really, really helpful having the UI. <laughs> so you can actually check things out and you can see if it's working or not. Uh, because when I was doing this um, for this video, uh, you know, there are several times it just wouldn't work until you figured out, oh, I need to uh, I need to change the uh, the chunk size, so um, Zep is another great uh, another great tool. Um, what I like about Zep is it has a few additional functionality. Um, unfortunately, you actually would need to use like programming. You would actually need to code it, hard code it to be able to use some of the additional functions that Zep has. Because if you look at Flowwise, um, Flowwise implements most vector stores pretty much the same way. Um, so, uh, you know, it uses the basic functionality. So if you want to get more out of it, you may need to go and do like a custom solution. Um, but Zep is very, very good. And um, I really actually like, uh, I like the experience and I like the, um, the user interface. One thing about the user interface is that once you install Zep, um, 
you either have to, for security reasons, you either should uh, disable the UI uh, dashboard because it's not authenticated, um, or what you can do is you just add a layer of authentication on top of the UI. So uh, that's another um, that's another possible solution. It does take a little bit more work, but you know um, if you want to be able to see if your uh, your documents are actually being embedded, um, it's a good way, uh, and it's better than you know starting and stopping the server every time. So that's Zep, and the last one that we're going to be looking at is something called Qdrent. And again, if you've been working with uh, Flowwise, you know that it's supported Qdrent for a while. And um, Qdrent is also supported in Vector Admin. So you can set up Qdrent, and uh, especially if you are uh, hosting it on your own server, you can uh, install Qdrent and then connect it to your uh, Vector Admin database. And so we're going to go here, and we're just going to see how we had some of the same. Um, this is the same question we asked uh, the uh, Chroma um, Chroma version, and it basically gives you the same thing. You know, if you change the prompts, it might give you a little bit different uh, different answer, but it's basically going to give you the same thing, uh, and even gives you the same um, source documents returning. You know, returning source documents. What I like about Qdrent is that the setup, especially if you go through the hosted option, is extremely straightforward. <laughs> it's very, very straightforward. Uh, they show you, they walk you through the entire process of how to set everything up. And, um, and you can see here, uh, these are some of, the, um, some of the embeddings in Qdrent. So uh, Qdrent is also, uh, they start you out with a very good, um, uh, free tier actually so if you see um, we're getting a four gigabyte disk uh, we're getting a one gigabytes of RAM and 0.5 uh, virtual CPUs so you get a pretty good um, pretty good serving with Qdrent and um, again like I said it's very very straightforward setting up um, and so yeah so you can choose all three <laughs> you can choose just one um, whatever makes things easier for you um, but like I said, being able to actually go ahead and see, um, I would say, you know, while Qdrent is very, um, is very straightforward, again, being able to manage your vector databases is going to become more and more important. So, you know, using something like uh, Vector Admin is a great solution, um, unless there's another, you know, like UI dashboard. But uh, using something like Vector Admin is a very, very good solution just because it gives you more control over your um, over your your vectors and so in the next video we're going to talk about using memory <laughs> with your chat applications and uh, this is extremely important because as you begin to move from uh, development to production uh, memory becomes very very important if you want to continue the conversation if you want any kind of um, you know continuity in your um, in your chats and so we're going to show you uh, a couple of options that you can use for memory, uh, as well as also how to manage those token costs. So I'll see you in the next video.